Hello and welcome to the Web Monkey Show. My name is Alex, and today I have a special Elemental tutorial for you. And specifically, I'm going to show you how you can create pop-ups using Elementor. Now, I guarantee you that by the end of today's tutorial, if you do have a plugin you're currently using specifically to create pop-ups, you will uninstall that plugin because the pop-up feature with Elementor is so powerful that you can create amazing pop-ups. Now, just to let you know, unfortunately, the pop-up feature is only available with the paid version of Elementor. You don't have access to the pop-up tools with the free version of Elementor. But hey, if you're still using the free version of Elementor, why haven't you upgraded yet? The paid version is really affordable and it's worth every penny that you will spend. Now, in full disclosure, I am an affiliate for Elementor, which means that if you buy Elementor Pro using my link, I will get a small commission. So if you want to say thank you or support me in any way, this would be the ideal way to do so. You will find my affiliate link in the description box below. But with that out of the way, let me now show you how you can create stunning, powerful pop-ups using Elementor Pro. To create a pop-up, we need to jump down here to templates and then you will see pop-ups. Just click on pop-ups. And now from here, click on the green button that says add new pop-up. Now make sure your template here is set to pop-up and then you can give an optional name. I'm gonna go with pop-up one. Just as an example, I'm gonna click on create template. Let's wait for a few seconds for the page to load and a few more seconds and there we go. All right. So in here right now, you can see all the pre-built templates for our pop-ups, but over here to the left at the top, you've got the category. So you can choose as an example, the bottom bar pop-ups. So this will be displayed typically at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you do have the classic as well where you have pop-ups that will maybe promote some sort of sale that you have going on, like, you know, 50% off, 20% off. Uh, you've got some other really interesting pop-ups in here. Let's fight together. Keep in touch. Don't worry, be happy. Things like that. You've got other categories, fly in, full screen, hello bar, slide in, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go with the uh, slide in just as an example. So let's see what we have over here. Which one can we uh, go with? I'm going to keep scrolling down. And uh, let's just say as an example, I'm going to go with the one over here that says, are you in? Okay. I'm going to click on insert right now. So let's see what this would actually uh, look like. Okay. So it says, are you in? 40,000 subscribers already enjoy our premium stuff. Subscribe now. So it's basically a pop-up to grow your mailing list. So in here, you can just click inside the individual sections and you can edit the necessary text if you wanted to. Uh, in here as well, you can change your image if you have something else that you wanted to use. So that's for the content. You've got the style. So you can increase the width of your pop-ups if you wanted to. You can set your max width, your opacity, just the usual regular kinds of features you have available with your regular uh, elements. And of course, advanced where you can add your margins and so on and so forth. I'm going to go ahead now and hit publish. Now this will take me straight to this particular page where you can now really and truly configure the way your pop-up is going to function. So the first thing here right now is the condition apply current template to this pages. So basically we're saying, where would we like to display this particular pop-up? You can click on add condition. So in here, you can just go with the entire site. You want to display this pop-up regardless of whether it's on a page, a post, your front page, but let's say we want it to be very precise, right? I can come here right now and say, well, I only want you to display this on singular pages and specifically the front page. So this will only display a pop-up on our front page. But what if you wanted to display the pop-up on another page in addition to the front page? Well, you'll have to come in here and add a second condition and then again, go with singular. And now in here, you can go with the all pages, but I'm going to switch from all and I can come in here right now and type in, 
any piece of text and it will show me all the available pages I have on my website. I don't have too many. In fact, I only have two pages, the home page and this sample page. So I can click in here right now. So basically this pop-up will only display it on my front page and then also on this particular page. So you can add as many conditions as you want to. You have access to your archives. Singular, you can specify whether you want to go with the post, the page media, uh, child pages of another page and so much more. So you have a lot of power to determine exactly where you want to display your pop-up. Now you can also go with the exclude, which will basically be the reverse, which means the pop-up will be displayed on every page except the ones you specify in here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the last two conditions. So this will only display on my front page. Good. Let's go ahead now and hit next. Now in here, you've got access to six different kind of triggers that will determine when the pop-up should be displayed. And the very first one here is on page load. So I can come in here, turn this on and then say, well, once the page has loaded, wait for four seconds before you actually display the pop-up, right? You've got the on scroll, which is okay. If the user is scrolling down or scrolling up and then within a certain percentage display the pop-up, right? You can go with the on scroll to a particular element. This is quite advanced. So in this case, you will have to choose a particular kind of class or ID. These are basically CSS selectors. So if you don't know anything about this, well, don't bother yourself. You can go with the on click as well, which says, okay, well, how many times should the user click on a page before the pop-up is displayed? And then in activity, maybe the user has been idle for the last 30 seconds, maybe, you know, 40 seconds, whatever, display the pop-up, all right? And then on page exit intent, this is one of the most powerful triggers. And this is extremely useful for capturing people's uh, emails. So basically what this does is if the user moves the mouse towards the close button for the window, that's when the pop-up will now be displayed. That is extremely powerful. And really these two, this top two, the on page load and then the on page exit intent, these tend to be the most common types of triggers, right? So in this case, I'm going to go with the latter on page exit intent. All right, let's go ahead now and hit next. And now in here, this is where the elemental pop-up becomes extraordinarily powerful. We've set the triggers, which basically determine when the pop-up should be displayed. But now with advanced rules, you can actually set conditions that need to be satisfied before the pop-up is actually displayed. As an example, you've got the show after X page view. So how, let's say the user has viewed a particular page or pages on our site three times at least, then you can display the pop-up. Or then you can say, well, maybe after two sessions. What this means is maybe the first time the user comes to our site, they take a look at our site, they leave, and then the second time they come to our website, that becomes a second session. So maybe only then should you now display this pop-up. So you can get really creative. You can create a pop-up that specifically welcomes the user back to your website. And then you can come in here and say, okay, after the second session, you can then say, hey, welcome back. Thank you so much. This is your second time visiting my site. I mean, you can really personalize the pop-ups. And then you've got the show up to X number of times. Uh, when arriving from a very specific URL, you can come in here and choose the URL specifically where you'd like to display the pop-up. So you can go with show or hide. You can also go with the regex. Regex is quite advanced. This way you can specify particular uh, URL patterns and only when those patterns are satisfied, that's when you would actually display the pop-up. This is fairly advanced and I don't think you would really need to use this. And then you can go broader and then say, show when arriving from either search engines, external links, internal links, you can go broader in this case. And now in here, you definitely want to go ahead and hide this particular one for most pop-ups, right? Because the idea here is if a user is already logged in, then you don't really need to capture the email address because the belief here is that you already have the email address. So unless you specifically are creating a pop-up for logged in users, 
you want to hide pop-ups from users who are already logged in. There's really no point. And then in here, you've got the show on devices. If you've tested the pop-up and you feel mm, it doesn't look too good on a mobile device, you can come in here and simply click X next to mobile. And now this will only display on your desktop and then on your tablet. So again, you can get really creative and really personal with when and how you want to display your pop-ups by using the triggers and also the advanced tools and of course the conditions as well. I'm gonna go ahead now, hit save and close. And there you have it. It says, hooray, your document is live. Awesome. I can click on have a look from here, but then depending <laughs> on your kind of theme that you're using, this might not look too good. So as you can see right now, well, this actually sucks, but hey, not a problem. I do have Firefox open right here. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to refresh my page and we're going to see whether or not the pop-up will actually uh, be displayed. So keep in mind that we have uh, about two conditions. One is it should display on the front page, which is this page right here, and then on the exit intent. So I'm going to move my mouse now, as you can see, I'm going to move over to the X to close and look at that the pop-up has magically now appeared. And there you have it. That's exactly how pop-ups work with Elementor Pro. Now that you've created your very first pop-up, you can access that pop-up and any other pop-ups by coming down to your templates and then you click on pop-ups. Gosh, how many times have I said the word pop-ups in this video? I don't know, but it's a lot. So anyway, in here you can see the one we've just created, pop-up one. I can click on edit with Elementor and here, I will actually be able to change the design as well as the functionality of the pop-up. So from here right now, uh, under settings, we have the layout. I can change the width to make it as wide as I want to. I can change the height, uh, change the position as well, maybe at the top, the bottom, depending on the particular pop-up. You can change the position as well, make it aligned to the center, to the right, to the left, same with the vertical. You can also show the overlay, which I would recommend, uh, show the close button, which I would also recommend, and then you can change the entrance animation. Do you want to go with the rotate in, slide in, slide out, you name it. And then you've got your animation duration. You've got your general settings where you can change the title of the pop-up, change its status from published to draft, private, whatever. And then you've got your preview settings in here as well. On the style, it's pretty much basic. You can add your background, maybe a background color or an image. You can add borders, your overlay and so on. But under advanced is where things can get quite interesting. So in here, you can decide to show the close button after a certain amount of seconds. You can also automatically close the pop-up after a certain number of seconds. Uh, you can prevent closing on overlay. You can also prevent closing on escape key. You can disable page scrolling, which means that basically if the pop-up has loaded, the user will not be able to scroll down or up until they either opt in for the pop-up or they decide to close the pop-up. And then you can avoid multiple pop-ups. And I will highly recommend you go with this option because you don't want to annoy the user on your website. If you start displaying pop-ups every time, that can get quite annoying. So we're basically saying, well, if one pop-up has already been shown to the user, do not show this pop-up. Only show this pop-up if it's the first pop-up the user is going to see. So I highly recommend uh, you go with this particular option. So I'm just going to go ahead now and update. And uh, that's pretty much how to design, build, and then configure and show your pop-up. But before I round up this tutorial, I want to show you one quick new feature. See, you now actually have the ability to pull in the information of the user that is logged in on your site. So as an example, take a look at this, okay? Rather than saying, are you in? What if I wanted to use the user's name and then invite them to join the mailing list? Just as an example, I can click on the text and this will take me to where I can now edit the title. Are you in over here? I've got the dynamic content. I can click in there 
And then if I scroll down here on the site, you will see user info. Again, keep in mind that the user needs to be logged in most of the time for this to actually work. I am logged in as White Hat, so I'm going to go with the user info. And now in here, you can then choose the particular field. Do you want to go with the ID of the user, the display name, username, bio, and so on? I'm going to go with the username. And just like that, White Hats, my username that I am using to log into my site has now appeared. So this is a very powerful new feature that Elementor have added. And you can use this with your pop-ups to create really powerfully personalized pop-ups that will really impress whoever the user is that's on your site. So you can go with username, first name, last name. Uh, it really depends on what you want to go with. And then you've got the advanced tab. Do you want to display this before a certain amount of text or after a certain amount of text? Or if the user doesn't have that particular uh, information, then there's a fallback. So in this case right now, I can just say, uh, just as an example, uh, my friend. <laughs> okay, so just as an example, I'm gonna say my friend, okay? So let me go back in here, change the field on the settings, change the field from username to, uh, let's go with uh, first name because I don't have a first name. So, and there you go. Right now you can see that because I don't have a first name registered with my site, it's now using the fallback, which is my friend. So <laughs> that's how you can make use of the advanced options under the, the dynamic uh, user info feature. So that's pretty much it. Let me just go back to my back end. And just as a gentle reminder, you do have access to uh, a wide variety of different kinds of pop-ups. So feel free to jump back in here under the templates and then choose any particular kind of pop-up that you want to work with. You've got pop-ups for capturing their email addresses, pop-ups to promote some sort of new product. You've got pop-ups for uh, promoting some sales. You've got pop-ups for notices, warnings, things like that. So you have a wide variety of different kinds of pop-ups you can work with. You can edit them and then choose exactly when and how or where you want to display those pop-ups. Well, there you have it. We've come to the end of this tutorial and hopefully you now know exactly how you can create powerful pop-ups using Elementor Pro. Just a gentle reminder, I am an affiliate for Elementor Pro. So right now, as of today, these are the current prices. You can get Elementor Pro at $49 for a whole year for just one site. Or if you want to go with the business account, you can get Elementor Pro for $99, but this is for three sites. Or you can go with the unlimited version where you have Elementor Pro for as many sites as you want. And that's $199 per year. So if you're interested in getting any one of these deals, please click on the link in the description box below. That's my affiliate link. It's a great way to support me and help me grow my channel. So thank you so much once again. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure teaching you this tutorial. If you like the video, well, do like, subscribe, share the video with people whom you feel might learn a thing or two from this and be sure to hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new WordPress tutorial. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.